Hi, we're live. I do believe we're recording. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to walk you through this week. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm running on maybe three and a half hours of sleep. I, I know it doesn't look like it because I've uh, had uh, t too many monsters in me. The monster drink. Does it? Oh, look at that. Look at that because it's green. It shows. You, you want to see what the Chinese looks like? Here's what the Chinese looks like. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that grand and great? All that, that, ch yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, do have any left in there? Oh, I need to, yeah, yeah. Mm. Got a little bit. I might be able to survive longer because of that. Let's look at books. Turn off this green thing here. Oh, look at that, it's my website. Look at that, it's me. Hmm. Uh. Well, we scroll down here, jessiesteel.com. We can go to books. Oh, 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 oh. I got to scale myself down to size first. Hold on. There. That's better. That's much better. Scroll down here, and we can go to books, or we can go to coffee. Well, let's go to books. All right, I, I, I put up each one of these this week. They're in Amazon. I, I know I put up some up last week, but they're all up. They're all available on Amazon. They're all here. They're all ready. Uh, you know, and I, I'm going to talk about it. I, I'm going to promote these and explain each of these in different videos. And, and, and you're seeing this before I put the videos on here, so this is kind of cool and nifty. But... Uh, I, I think I want to explain what it's like publishing stuff at Amazon. In fact, uh, well, here, I'll just show you what all is here. Each of these is a book. They've been written over a long period of time. Um, th there will be videos explaining each of these. I'm not going to explain what the obvious is, but these books go back to 2012. I actually wrote them in 2011. Uh, here's kind of a short book. Uh, you know, some people's party. That's that, that that that's politics. That's that's the solution to politics. Uh, Game on was about why Christians don't have uh, good movies and stuff. Sunflower movement. You know, I just there'll be videos here. You can go watch these. Oh, this is great though. This is a study book. It's a study Bible. It's my translation of Revelation, and and it's eight and a half by eight and a half, and it's got lots of space for writing. It's great. It's only paperback. You can get the the my translation is a simple paperback or, or in in um an ebook format, of course, but this is like a study thing. You can copy it, photocopy it, no problem. No, no money, no, no problem. But it's just really excellent. So you know, this is about T. Jesse Young is a T thing, and then this is uh, the, the Jesse Young. Jesse Young's borrowed from my Chinese name, if you didn't know. Mere Theology, Theology Book, uh, Memoirs of Ophanine, kind of my Cimmerillion, but it's about angels and the Bible and stuff. And then this is uh, a bunch of books they just didn't work as paperbacks by themselves. I just couldn't, so I put them together. Anyhow, putting these all together like this was a little bit uh, crazy difficult. Uh, let's uh, let's have a look here and see. There, there, there they are on Amazon. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you. I mean, and, and by the way, look, th this is part. This is part of the podcast. That, no, I decided to do this episode free. I might do more. I might not. Really, I'll have to look and see. But I'm doing this one free. But normally, you'd pay $11 a year to get access to these. And it's just me on cut. It's me informal. It's just me talking. And it's, it's the real me, and I'm here, and it's, it's real, and it's me. Uh, the, the regular podcast with ads, 10 minutes, format, focused, on topic, point, boom, but... If you want me to understand inside tips about, you know, what it's like as a publisher, which I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to, it's only available, uh, jesse.coffee. We'll look at that, that in a minute. Looking at all these, getting all these published was exhausting. And I want to, and I, I don't know what it is. I can only search by author name and I didn't write this. So I don't know how that, I think that's like Amazon suggestions or something where that, that came from. So here they are in Amazon. Now, where, if I go, I'm using Ubuntu here, by the way, which I make videos on, on how to do Ubuntu and watch Ubuntu and stuff. Oh, th this actually is, is the video file we're recording right now. Isn't that nifty looking? 
let's see if I go into uh, my uh, my books and just find the books find the, the published books here uh, let's let's take uh, the 95 theses book that I wrote I've got the, uh, the different different files here okay here's our Amazon paperback version and, and, and I use LibreOffice for all these. You can use LibreOffice to publish stuff. You don't, you don't need to have, uh, you know, expensive word processor software. So there it is. That's, that's my Word file, and I, I publish the whole thing. I, every one of these books has, uh, you know, the table of contents. Every one of these books has format stuff just like this. This one's really big. It's like one per page. But this is uh, five by eight, five inches by eight inches. And then there it is. And it goes down to the end. And there's my about the author page. And uh, that's uh, that, that, that's that's it. So those are those are what the books. Okay, you know I'll I'll, I'll show you what an ebook version looks like. There's an ebook version. Uh, I'll show you the Amazon ebook. I've got another ebook thing that I use. Uh, Smashwords is great. I really like Smashwords. They do everything except Amazon. Well, they do Amazon, but you have to have a thousand downloads first, which, which I'm going to get to. I'm going to get to that in a minute. The, the war on smallness, which I've talked about before, but this is the ebook version. Now, ebooks don't really pay attention to the page size or your layout. It's mostly like this is a header, this is bold, and that's about it. Because ebooks, you can change the font and the size on your ebook reader. So a lot of those formatting options kind of don't matter. So you save it as a .doc file or whatever. Oh, this one was for my cousin. So this is the four page. It looks a little different. And and these are clickable links, table of contents. And and I like I say, I've got 15 books that I personally have written and published. They're on almost every single ebook platform, and I do all of it myself, and I know how to do this. If you have a question with a book, I suppose I'd do one, but I, I don't get requests to do ebooks for people. I, I haven't had that happen. So I suppose you're, well, I just don't advertise my ability to do that. But if you you got a book, you got a manuscript, and you want to just get it out there in ebook, and you want it on Amazon, you want it print, you want you, I'll format it for you for fifty dollars an hour, no problem. I'd, I'd do an estimate and look at it. I'd to see your manuscript or something like that. But uh, I could, I'd, 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 I'd probably do the whole thing and have the whole thing set up for fifty to one hundred dollars. I, I, I could do that. The way I charge stuff, I charge based on what the actual time is so the 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 estimate or the quote or less in fact you know what i should do i should talk before i get back to this i should i should change this back up here and go green because anyone can take from any of these podcasts and use clips of it if you I mean, if you want to see this and see these types of podcasts you're going to have to go subscribe at either Patreon or jesse.house, get the dollar a month thing. Patreon, it's $1 a month, I think, at the time I'm making this video anyway. And jesse.house, instead of jesse.com, is jesse.house. That's $11 a year. So it's $1 a month, but you get a month free. And it's, it's billed once a year. And then you get access to these. You get the commercial-free podcast. You get a nice little place to view the weekly Jesse stuff on one page without ads. It's a nice little dealio. As oh, what was I, I? I need water. What was I? I it happens to me. I I I I I, 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 I get, get brain fade and I can't think and I have to have water. Ever have that happen to you? <sighs> Pardon my French. Let's. Um, ah, I forgot what I was, I told you, I've had only three hours of sleep, so I forgot what I was going to talk about. So let's talk about Amazon and bigness. Amazon's got this war. On, no, no, I listen, I might go back 
and I might watch the video again, decide what it is, and then you want to know what I was going to say, you're going to have to, to subscribe. Yeah, there you go. Amazon will let anyone put up, you know, books on their platform. But if there's another bookstore, another ebook store that wants to get their stuff on Amazon, they have to have a thousand uh, ebook downloads first. And so by the time your stuff gets to Amazon, you're already so big. A, th a thousand isn't huge, but it's a thing. You exist, you have a, a core cult following, or you're a niche, or you're kind of, you're a thing. And you just might be solvent. I mean, a, a thousand on Patreon, that, that, that's a thousand dollars a month. You know, that, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a little part-time job. That, that's enough for some people to retire. So, uh, you know, Amazon wants you to get to this thousand mark first. And now, now Amazon's starting this new platform. In fact, let's see if we can, let's see if we can take a look at this. The, uh, the Amazon uh, new store uh, beta. Let's 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 see what we get with that. Amazon uh, the, 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 the launches a beta cashiered. Uh, ah, you know what? Looking where where is uh, Amazon? Amazon recently, uh, desk, uh, Amazon, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it wasn't this browser I must have been in. What, 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 what was it? Did TechCrunch, Te TechCrunch did a store on this. Amazon Influencer, that's what it's called. Amazon Influencer. Amazon Influencer. The idea of Amazon Influencer is you got someone who's kind of whatever, and they can, you know, they've got people or, or however it works. And here, I'll scale myself down to size, like, like the pastor always wanted to do to me. You got Amazon Influencer, and it's, it's in beta or whatever. It's, it's, it's basically you've got an audience of following, you recommend products, you do product reviews or whatever, you recommend products to people and people can click on it and shop for it. But you've got to have a, a large social media following already. Uh, <clears throat> if I've got a large enough social media following, then I've already set up my own channel so I don't need Amazon. This is part of a war on smallness. Now, Amazon, I'm not going to say they're entirely stupid in their business practices, but this, this is a thing that I see coming. I'm <sighs> turn this off and go into rant mode. There's such a big thing with this war on smallness. This, this, see, if you're little then you're annoying. And, you know, if you're big, you put something on your page, everybody goes and clicks on it. Well, guess what? I mean, everybody probably also buys from Amazon anyway. The people that are going to go to your Amazon influencer page have a moderately reasonable chance that they already shop for stuff on Amazon anyway. So it's not driving much new traffic to Amazon, not that much. It might be marginal amounts, but it's really redirecting traffic from other Amazon sources to now your thing. So having only people that already are big enough that they don't need you being your only customers, my goodness. If, if, if that's Amazon's business model, I, I mean, I, I hope Amazon's done a lot of good stuff for the world. I, you know, Trump likes to complain about them owning the Washington Post. 
but I, I mean, Amazon, I don't have a problem with Amazon, but God forbid. I mean, do you know how Walmart got huge? Sam Walton worked at a, like a DNC or something. He had a, a dime store type thing and he was a manager. And he was this little tiny manager and wanted to talk to Kmart's president. Well, Kmart's president was stupid enough to let the competition into his office because Kmart's president was this, this big office war on smallness type of thinking uh, culture that, you know, you can assume by thinking about, you know, just looking at what was going on. Yeah, I, I am really tired, aren't I? I am really tired. Kmart, Kmart's president brings in Sam Walton, sits him down, and Sam says, what's your strategy? How does it work? And they said, well, we only put a store where there's already 50,000 people. Sam Walton didn't say so, but he's thinking, I, I only need 5,000 people in order to run a store the size of a Kmart. So he started smattering Walmarts all over the country wherever there were 5,000 people and there wasn't a Kmart. So by the time that, that bigness requirement threshold came along, Kmart puts in one store, Sam Walton already had 10. And that, and the other thing was, there was a Walden Books boycott because Walden Books was selling uh, inappropriate adult, quote unquote, I'd say quite immature adult, but adult content. And that was a boycott because Kmart owned Walden Books and Walden Books wouldn't. So that, that also was eating up Kmart customers. Bigness, smallness. When you're big and you're part of that big established culture, small people can be annoying, but if you don't learn to put up with them, they can eat you alive like a bunch of fire ants. Okay, I remember what I was going to talk about a little bit earlier. Uh, charging money and, and, and how, to, how to charge money for things. If, if you don't have an objective, stated, clean way to charge money for whatever services you do, then you're not going to be fun for people to talk to. People want to know how much they need to pay you. And we've got to pay for stuff because if we all do this, la la, let's all be friends and do everything free. If you do that, everybody dies. Ask the pilgrims. Ask companies that pay everybody $70,000 a year, uh, regardless of their work. Just look at history. It's just, it's not fun and it doesn't go anywhere good. You want, if you need to try that, I, I had a friend, I'm running a charity. We're taking all of our profits and we're giving it away. I'm like, okay, well, where are you going to live? Well, I live in a barn and like he lived in a barn and that didn't work out. And eventually he grew wise and had to go uh, work and charge money. And he decided that hating money wasn't going to help anyone. I mean, if you stay poor, that doesn't help anybody in the world. As, as, you know, one guy failing doesn't make another guy win. One, one person doesn't have to fail in order for someone else to win. Now you, you know, in a competition maybe, but in, in the business world, you need everybody to succeed. I mean, if, if you, as the business sells something, and, and someone has to fail in order for you to succeed, you as the company, you sell something, then your customer failed. Well, that customer isn't going to come back. And in the business world, failure and success are mutual. Uh, at least if you're related or working with people. So if someone you're working with or f competing against fails, uh, that, that could likely hurt you depending on the nature of the relationship. Once you get to that point where you've decided that making money is a good thing because there's so much in on TV and in culture and especially Sunday morning, if you're not part of the churchy church, Ned Flanders, that is a Simpsons uh, archetype, but if you're not part of the churchy church Sunday morning Bible thumper group and you're part of the secular culture, it, it doesn't matter. Sunday morning or Hollywood, you're, it's all the same. Money's bad. We need donations. We, we got to just give our stuff away and give it. It's this, it's this, 
they don't they never say it that way but it's this it's a it's a idea that y- you walk away with and so people think well i'm going to give away all my money once you've realized that that's not working in your life and that's not helping your kids and that's not helping you help the people that you want to help once you've figured that out the next lesson is to learn to be direct with people and tell them what to pay you and there is this guy who wrote a little series on this. I wish I had his name off the top of my head. It's called uh, Charge What You're Worth. And he did this little email series thing where he talks about what you're worth. And in his company, he said he charged 20,000 US dollars a week. Of course, his clients were large. I looked at that. He said that he had 11 employees. Well, they would work full time, that's 40 hours, about, let's say, one week, $20,000. Uh, himself paying his people, that that's about uh, pushing maybe $40 an hour. Uh, you know, that he's paying people. And that, this is, you know, like high level client, large account, like serious developer, it's, it's, it's $40 an hour. So you, when you get these, you get, get these, these code monkey geeks and $20,000 sounds like a large, but that that's to pay 11 employees and yourself and the office, uh, for a full week of work. Generally, I look at hourly. Look at what you know, look at how efficiently you can work, what you can get done. Look at the market and you should know about your price. My price, I figure my work is about worth $50 an hour for the United States. Uh, If if you go to other places, it might not be the same, but uh, for clients in the United States, uh, I'm worth $50 an hour uh, for their money and my time and so forth. I look at that and then you take the numbers and you look at the project and say, how long will the project take? And then I tell people that project costs this much money. So I don't hassle people with my $50 an hour cost and let them figure it out. I just tell them that I estimate per project based on that hourly rate. So you should look at what you're doing and about what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing, you should be at least $50 an hour. If you can work super, super efficiently, uh, then obviously a little more than that. Okay. That was, that was charging what we're worth. And then I talked about the war on bigness and I, but listen, I don't have a problem with Amazon. I, I, I I really, I really, Amazon's great. They're a very good company. I love that I can sell my stuff on their website. I love that they have print on demand. I really hope that this new, uh, what's it called? Influencer. Uh, program. I really hope it works well for them. Uh, I, you know, it's in beta, so maybe they only want big celebrities first. But just as a general rule, limiting your options so that people can only work with you if they are already so big that they don't need you, that that hurt Kmart. And it's just a matter of time before someone comes along and discovers that about Amazon. And that's why my eBooks in any of the ebook stores out there, Apple, I'm in the Apple bookstore. I, I'm very happy that I'm in the Apple bookstore. Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble's amazing. The only brick and mortar chain bookstore left. Good job, Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's Sony, a d- d- lot of different ebook markets out there. Uh, I'm free for the first thousand books. That's my gift to people. The first thousand books are free. Go, go get the ebook while it's free. Once it gets to a thousand, then I'm going to charge a price based on what it would cost to print in paperback. So, you know, it's like if the paperback book is fifteen dollars, I might charge three dollars for the ebook. The ebook is virtual, but you know, I want I want it to be not too ridiculous to not get the the paperback. If the if the paperback is only needs to be seven dollars, I might charge only uh, you know one or two dollars. Uh, maybe a buck fifty for a book. I don't know. 
once I get to a thousand, the price goes up on the ebook. That's that's how I do things. But Amazon won't let me use that channel. They won't let anybody use that channel to put ebooks on their platform. You've got to deal with them directly if unless you've had a thousand. So I had two options. Either one, I, I can just, you know, let you know, wait till I get a thousand downloads or whatever, or I can put them on Amazon directly, but that's a luxury. So I charge 99 cents for the books on Amazon. You can get the Amazon format free if you go to smashwords.com. So you can still get the first thousand books free, even for Kindle. But if you want it in your Kindle library, no, I'm adding a dollar. Amazon wants to do things that way. I have to respond. It's, it's just sense. It's not hatred. That's just sense. And I, like I say, I'm running into the same thing with YouTube now. All of a sudden, you have to have a thousand subscribers in order to monetize your channel. Well, by the time you're at a thousand, you're a thing. You're a niche. Your customers expect certain things of you. And if all of a sudden you start running ads, that's bait and switch. It doesn't work. It's not a business model. Sorry, YouTube. I'm never going to monetize a channel. If I do, I'll have to change fundamentally who I am and be part of a larger reinvention. That could happen. But the, 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 the podcast, as I do it now, as I do things now, hitting a thousand subscribers, suddenly you can monetize now. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go there. I'm setting up a business model where I don't monetize, including going over to Daily Motion. So right now, the way I monetize my YouTube stuff, podcast, all that stuff, the weekly podcast, that's available on Daily Motion. It's got advertisements. It's monet It's free to you. You know what? what you know what? I, I want to make it free to you because we got to pay the bills. That just makes sense. So it's got advertisements in it. I don't control them. That's from Daily Motion. I love it. It's great. Daily Motion's very good quality stuff. Very excellent quality videos. But uh, if you want to get ad free, pay me eleven dollars a year at Jesse House. That's how I monetize it, and I, I I might stick with that. I don't I don't really have a reason not to. So there's this war on smallness, and from the from the big guy's perspective, it seems to make sense because you get big company. See here, I should probably go to my green screen so I can talk more about this. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back to this. In fact, I'm gonna go back to. See, see how this works up here, this menu? You see this? I'm going to go back here to the, the main Jesse website here. <clears throat> Talk about this on green screen so it's easy for people to copy this. When you're the big guy, it's very easy to look at all the, the little annoying people and, and their nuisance and how frustrating they are and say that they're what's wrong. They're what the problem is. They're the ones hurting the business, the company, the organization because they're the little nerd weird geeks. And if we can just get rid of them and we can just boot all the non-team players, there's this culture that if we do things that way, that it's going to help the business and it even happens in government. But the problem is if you don't have your, your business scalable and handicap, it's called a ramp, you know, you, you, handicap accessible to have a, it's on ramp. If you don't have stuff scalable so that everybody's able to play on some level, handicap people may not be able to walk normally, but at least they'll be, they'll have a ramp that lets them, come in as they are. And that's, see, it's a different, it's different from the communism to each according to his need from each according to his ability type of thing where, you know, you don't get what you work for. You just get the same that, that fails just for whatever reason that fails. This is about everybody as they are is welcome, however big or small they are. And, and you, you get this, this, corptocratic, I'm big, I don't want to mess with little people, takeover stuff, that's when companies start to go down and fail. And the problem is comfort. 
in the government, it's easier to deal with big people because they talk nice and they're calm and they're collected and they have lawyers dot all their I's and cross all their T's for them and they're so nice and easy to deal with. But if you don't take time to deal with all the little annoying people, those little annoying people go somewhere else. They create a black market, they create a ghetto, they, they go to another country, they, 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 they buy from another company, they go somewhere else and eventually you go out of business, your, your revenue goes down, immigration falls or whatever, people, you're no longer wonderful and, and, and the money's gone and when the money's gone, everything else is gone because money is kind of the blood of, of, of human civilization. All right. I'm going to go back here and just explain to you quick. You know what? Here, here's, in fact, I'm going to say it this way. I'm, I'm not going to go explain it. This is, this here is jesse.coffee. And, you know, you click on books, you go to books. House shows you my projects. Church is some Christian stuff I've written, some of the books, like I've studied Bible in college and I have continued studying. So coffee, uh, well, are you opening? Oh, oh, that's right. You're going to a different table. There we go. The, the, the Jesse dot coffee, and in, in here's the stuff you can, you know, the way Jesse dot coffee works is you, you can you can sign up for it. I may explain that in a later video, but um, the way this works is this has been. It we're over thirty minutes now, and I would keep these about thirty minutes. And I'm sorry, I'm really tired, but then you get to see me all weird. And you see the real Jesse. You know, reality TV is a thing. So this is a real Jesse. So you get to see the real Jesse. I'm here, I'm uncut, I'm unrefined, I'm not in performance mode. I'm not talking on point about a topic. I'm just rambling and I'm showing you the stuff on my desktop. You know what? There's one other thing I really wanted to show you. And we're over our time, but the time is really limited. You don't know how long it's going to be. This is only available, only available through jesse.coffee. You get $1 premium. Or if you prefer Patreon, very easy to find me on Patreon. There's a Patreon button. You scroll down. I'm on Patreon. Same thing. Uh, a couple different pages, but it just... There's a page for patron. They get the same thing, and then what what happens? Well, let, let's 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 see if you, if you if you get the one dollar premium version because I'm subscribed to my own one dollar premium version, of course. If we go to the one dollar premium version, then you get these videos that have you know this would be this is the the normal uh, the the thirty minute thing that's not available anywhere else, and this is uh, the normal video like uh, the the ten minute podcast. And here are a couple. Pacific Daily Times uh, editorials I do, and they don't have ads. Very easy to watch, and you get access to this, and and you can you can watch all this. It's ad free. It's really nice and easy to view, and that's that's for eleven dollars a year. And so, like I say, this one is ad free. The other two, these are ad free, and this one, you, like this thirty minute one that you've saw, you get access to all these. Okay. I wanted to show you one other thing, which would be a typical uh, thing that I might talk about. And I just really want to show you this. I've been working on this this week. Let me scale myself down to size like the pastor always wanted to. I, I made this this week. Don't, don't, don't ask what these weird lines are, but so far I've only got the capital letters done. Here, here's, here's, okay, you know what? I'll show you what these lines are. See, when I make these swirly, the swirly dealies, see, this is going to be for the, the T and the F. You can see that. Uh, th this is an example of the practice. If you want to draw a good cursive, you just need to practice something like an L, sort of. Uh, here's my J, my C, my E. Here's the thing. The lowercase letters here took me about two and a half hours. And that A took me an hour and a half <laughs> and uh, the E took another hour and a half. L was pretty quick. Uh, so was J, but the capital letters are taking a long time, but I, these are going to be free at, at pink, right? I'm, I'm working on these and, and, and I, you know, the thing is I do this stuff all week long, you know, I'm, I might introduce this a little bit, but like, 
you know, you know the normal, the traditional is you duck my head down. You can look at my bald head and the M and the N. See, typically the the M and the N are supposed to look like this. It's called traditional cursive. It's called cursive, not calligraphy. Cursive, they're different. This is a copper plate F. And I changed this K because I'm like, what the heck is that? Like I just, it's like a balloon that needs to be popped. It looks like an E next to an L. I've always wondered when I, since I was a kid, I just that something's not right about that. So I wanted to make the cursive K have a little loop-de-loop, -loop, a flatter loop, but look like a K. So that was my invention. So is the M and the N. It still has the humps, but the first one's pointy because I just always, you know. So the the curvy loop-de-loop -loop on the tails here with the Y and the Z and the G and the J, that's from the L. If you really want to be good at cursive, it, you don't want to take these letters. And, and this is going to be totally free. Schools will be able to use this without a license. They'll have materials and printing and stuff all on Google Documents. It'll be totally free uh, because Pinkwright is part of a bigger business model. I will be certifying teachers. I, uh, teachers will be able, not required, uh, not required, no, no, no license, just they will have a license that they've been certified, that they understand Pinkwright. And it won't be very expensive. And I hope to add TESOL to it, ESL certification to it eventually. But the license is fully open. When, when you practice cursive, you don't want to slowly draw your pen over top of this. What you want to do is you, you want to practice loops like this sort of thing. Uh, maybe I'll do a video with my calligraphy stuff sometime. You want to practice the loops with this sort of thing and just kind of get good at it. And then when it comes time to do the J, oh, we're doing that loop-de-loop -loop thing. You know, L, oh, it's just the loop-de-loop -loop thing. A, oh, it's just, it's kind of a loop-de-loop -loop thing. You know, you get good at doing the loop-de-loops. And, and, and so th actually that loop-de-loop -loop on the G, the J, the Y, and the Z, those actually aren't that hard. If you can do the loop-de-loop, -loop, it's actually easier to draw those. So this is, this is an attempt to try to get cursive a little bit more beautiful. It's based on a, a, a primer uh, type of, uh, like the, the, there's a first year and a second year. I, I already have at Pinkwright the, the, the simple print letters already written. And then I was doing this for second year, uh, second grade, uh, second year write learning. But I took a lot of time with this and I thought about this. Uh, one other thing, I decided, see, again, this is the geek, uh, goofy, regular, uncut podcast. So I'm just sharing with you my uncut, unrefined, oh, Jesse's at his desk rambling away thoughts about what goes into my work. And I, it's conversational, and I'll just sit here and ramble away. And I don't have any music. I'm not into music. I want you to listen to your own music. I don't want to take 30 seconds, take 5, 10 seconds, show you my cool graphic that anyone can make these days, and insert that at the beginning. No, I don't do that. I, I keep it simple, straight, just the content. I might put a quick uh, .com something at the beginning or end, but usually not. I wanted the A and the C, the D, some of these letters, especially with the A in them, a base letters, the A, D, G, uh, where are you, Q. I wanted, oh, also C, and I decided U and O. I wanted those letters clearly that if they're at the front of a word, that they don't start with a loop. But I thought that the L and the others, J, I, H, T, even P, if they start a word, they should have that little pickup tail, even if it's starting the word. That was what I decided. So each of these letters is as they would appear front or last in a word. And if you're dealing with the C and O or one of the A base letters, of course, there's going to be a loop-de-loop -loop going up to it. So I didn't you know, whether to add the front loop on the A and so forth can be confusing. Kids, I mean, seven-year-olds can figure out that you're, oh, I'm going to loop into the A. Okay, you don't need to draw a graphic for them to figure that out. People are smart, give them credit. These are what the letters look like. And they only change if there's something before or after them. So 
I, I could talk more about this at Pink Right. Once I get this finished, I will be talking more about the letters. I have introduced the letters, but I might talk more of philosophy about them at another time. But, okay, you know, do you want to you want to see that? Okay, all right. You know what? I'll I'll do it. I don't I don't mind doing it. I think that's fine. Uh, let's see where we are in uh, the pink right. Uh, you know, all this I've created. If we do the the print uh, basic letters, yeah, here it is. I made these. I made these letters myself. This is the first year. This is a lowercase practice sheet. And uh, th th this is cyan. It uses that light blue ink. It's called cyan in the printer. Only exclusively that, that one type of ink. And there's another one. It's called magenta. I always say magenta. So it helps people remember it if you say it weird like that. The ki kids, kids love it. I say, what color is this? Magenta. No, you have to say magenta. And then magenta. And then they all remember it. And it becomes our favorite color, pink. But I have these in printers. This is true flat black. It only uses the, the black in the printer. A lot of times black is like a mixed gray and uses all the colors and it's very expensive. This uses only black and this uses only that light blue called cyan. And then I have another one that uses only the magenta. So you can balance these out and gauge what ink you're using on your printer. Very, very good useful thing uh, to, to balance and budget. Each of these I made, and I studied Danielian as a kid, and I had opinions about these, uh, worked hard and long on these, and this is the first year print style. And I, I didn't slant the V because I just didn't think it needed to be. The other letters, kids aren't going to write them slanted forever anyway. It's just practice slanting. Yeah, but the V and the X I didn't slant. Yeah, yeah, yeah there I did it. I, I, it's kind of like Danielian, but I didn't have those controversial monkey tails on the H, the M, the N, the K, and the X. I mean, you know, what in the world's going on? And I also thought these tails are little, like on the T and so forth. I wanted, the, I wanted people to practice little tails, little cute little tails. I wanted a really good A, and my T's go to the top. I'm not, I'm not a half to the top T guy. If you want to put your T's up only halfway, do it. Go do it. But when you're learning, I wanted letters to be regular. That's how I did it. And it has really been great. Happy to have been with you. This is, this is a little bit longer than normal because I was talking about stuff. But this is what people get uh, every week for $11 a year plus ads free. All right.